We have the green flag and the event is started. Watch the box. In 2001, Congress mandated that by 2015, one-third of the operational combat ground vehicles should be unmanned. Congress authorized the Defense Department and the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, known as DARPA, to award cash prizes as a means of recognizing outstanding achievements in defense-related research and development. Look at this, isn't this amazing? On the MIT steering wheel here. And we can tell you that Talos is uh, now beginning its second mission. When you're looking at the amount of data that they have to crunch to be able to sift things out and make decisions, it's really hard to keep things simple. The tendency is going to be to put more sensors, more computers, funnel in more data. Hi, I'm Chad Vanderveen. 2007 marks the third of the DARPA Grand Challenge events for autonomous robotic vehicles. It is known as the Urban Challenge, with three and a half million dollars in prize money for the winners. The 60 mile course is run in three major missions, comprised of 19 submissions, executed by vehicles with no human control except for an emergency stop. The vehicles must navigate and drive entirely on their own. Talos has more computing power and sensors on board than most small cities. You could cast it as a heads up on the dashboard whenever the fog comes up. Dr. Norman Whitaker, Urban Challenge Program Manager, said vehicles competing in the Urban Challenge will have to think like human drivers and continually make split-second decisions to avoid moving vehicles, including robotic vehicles without drivers, and operate safely on the course. The urban setting adds considerable complexity to the challenges faced by the robotic vehicles and replicates the environments where many of today's military missions are conducted. The challenge of the urban environment is once again to push the technology so that we can build safe robots. Prior to the final event, the National Qualification Event tested the 35 semifinalists on their ability to safely navigate subsections of the course. This was really testing how your bot was going to do when it was out there with traffic. Now the problem we had is that this traffic was driven by people. And the difference between this test series and the finals is that there are not only going to be people driving, but there's going to be other bots driving. So we had to kind of also figure out what's going to happen when two bots meet each other, which has never been done before at speed. There were to be 20 competitors in the final event. Well, 20 aren't going to be in the finals. Uh, it's going to be a smaller number, a smaller number that we felt uh, could actually make the course and make it safely. This is not a game. That we're going to have a lot of people out there and people can get hurt. The number that are going is 11. That's it. It's a prime number, that's a good thing. On November 3rd, 2007, the Urban Challenge final event began, but not without problems. The bot in the pole position, Boss, from Tartan Racing of Carnegie Mellon University, was unable to start. Odin of Team Victor Tango from Virginia Tech got the honor of starting first. Soon it was determined that the Jumbotron video display was producing significant electromagnetic interference. The Jumbotron was shut down and Boss successfully started. XAV250, the bot from Intelligent Vehicle Systems, had its own problems at the start and had to be paused. It was returned to the start chute and successfully relaunched. There were a number of groundbreaking events over the course of the day. The dreaded bot meets bot went off without incident, but then... And it looks like we may have a bot in distress, trying to figure out whether or not it will be able to sense and back up to get back on course. The 26 vehicle. Wow. And Talos. now he's going to, and Talos is going to pass. Very aggressive. And Whoa. Oh. oh, we had our first collision. <laughs> Crash in turn one. Yeah, that's exactly where you wouldn't want to be hit, is yeah. right in your sensor package. Uh, here comes, it looks like little Ben approaching. See, now, now oh. what do we do? Okay. okay, folks, we have got our first autonomous traffic jam. <laughs> Another historic <laughs> event right here. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh. It looks like Terramax came awfully close to basically taking a pillar and replacing it. 
Despite these occurrences, the race unfolded with remarkable smoothness, with six of the 11 bots completing all 19 submissions within the three major missions. Organizers and observers were constantly struck by the seemingly human behavior of the autonomous robotic vehicles. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't help but give human qualities to an inanimate object. To see a car with nobody operating it, it's bizarre. You look in the vehicle and there you go, an empty seat. Well, yeah, and, and I think it's the behavior of the vehicle is so human-like that you start to forget that it is a machine that is making its own decisions. The last bot to complete the event was named Skynet, an obvious nod to the intelligent robots waging war on humanity in the Terminator movies. The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency is the central research and development organization for the Department of Defense. DARPA sponsors revolutionary, high payoff research that leads to innovative new military capabilities. This is Chad Vanderveen for GTTV, and check back with us soon for our in-depth look at the 2007 DARPA Urban Challenge. No buildings were harmed by the vehicles participating <laughs> in this challenge.